You know, the, the way I've kind of put it in the, in the U.S. and Europe is that this is a point of concern, but not one of alarm for us. To date, all of the cases have been centered in China, although a little bit alarmingly, in just in the last two days, it's moved from being centered around Shanghai to now uh, being much more north in, in Beijing. And those are two very large population centers. I think reassuringly, there has been no evidence of transmission from one human to another. Were that to happen, that would be the first signal toward an influenza pandemic. Two, two of the three conditions already exist. A novel virus that in this case has never infected humans before. And the second point being that humans don't have any uh, immunity to it. There's no baseline or population, or sometimes called herd immunity to it. If, it, if the virus was able to mutate and develop the ability to spread from person to person, that would be an alarming observation and would bear very close watching. I, I think a, an important point, and, and people really should not panic about this, it, may, it could just recede into obscurity and us never see it again. Or it could just sort of slightly bumble along, much like another bird virus, H5N1, has done for over a decade few cases here and there, but the virus uh, has not developed the ability to spread efficiently from human to humans. That's what everybody's looking at. That's what all the attention is centered around. Were that to happen, I think we're in a good place in the sense that because of past pandemics, we have adequate supplies of antiviral drugs and the virus is sensitive to that. And our own CDC and other agencies around the world are now beginning to develop a seed virus so that if a vaccine was necessary, we could make it.